Hello, Aspies and Aspionettes. Can I just say you're looking lovely today? Welcome back to the Asperger's Growth Channel with me, Mr. Thomas Henley, as usual. As usual. In this video today, we're going to be talking about the lesser known little cousin of the autistic meltdown, autistic shutdowns. There's a lot of autistic in that sentence. Even more now. Autism. In this video, I'm going to be covering what they are. What do they look like from the outside? What do they feel like? What do they feel like for the person? And I'm also going to be giving you some ways of coping with meltdowns, shutdowns rather, or already going off track. Coping with autistic shutdowns in the moment and also trying to help in preventing them in the future or at least making them a little bit more easy to deal with. So if you're interested in any sort of ironic or any sort of actual genuine interest way, please stick around for the rest of the video and um, enjoy the little explosion that I do every time. <laughs> So, let's get straight into the beat of it. <laughs> so, let's get straight into the meat of it. We've got Mr. Autism Shutdown in the right corner and um, Autism Meltdowns in the left. They're gonna be battling out for the title of which one's worse? Which one, which one hurts your, your soul? Both of them, that's the answer. Just as a little bit of a recap, Autistic meltdowns are those scenarios where everything becomes very overwhelming, whether it's sensory or you have some social influence or you're just having a bad day. All of those things can congregate in your mind and send your brain into some hyperactive frenzy, which usually leads to aggressive stimming, so any kind of like weird movements that we do. and. Uh, <laughs> And also, large outbursts of emotion, usually to do with anxiety or sadness or anything like that. You can have happy meltdowns, but those are weird. We don't talk about those. But meltdowns are those things that you see in those like autism memes and stuff about kids having what most people would view as temper tantrums in the middle of supermarkets, which is obviously not right. But they have a lot more of a mainstream sort of... I was going to say appeal then, but the more known about, that's the bulk of it. Autistic shutdowns on the other the other hand, they sort of, they, they do have the same causes and they are usually more of a thing that happen in a specific environment. So some, some place where there's certain expectations of you, uh, whether it's social or not, and you try your best not to have a meltdown and go crazy about it, but you end up just getting stuck in inside your own head um, in constant thought loops about what to say and overthinking every minute detail in, in repetition and, you know, it, it just shuts your brain off and that's why it's called a shutdown. In this state, it feels very dissociated. So it feels like you, you've just kind of been sucked out of reality a little bit. It can be both voluntary and involuntary. Voluntary meaning that if you know that you're going to have a meltdown and you don't want to have to do that in a public place or in any sort of place, you'll sort of voluntarily put yourself into this instead. On the other side, it can be a lot more involuntary. So if you're having a quite an important conversation and you've completely lost your train of thought, um, you, you, you're likely to get yourself stuck in a little loop. Just like if someone was stressed about giving a presentation and they messed up and they forgot their notes, but just m more in real life and, and more in scenarios that aren't like that. Everyday things, everyday things, and it's usually a sort of accumulation of different stresses and uh, problems that occur during the day piled into one and brought out by some some other stressor. One of the struggles of having a shutdown is that not many people understand quite the reason why it happens. So if you have 
someone that you are in a romantic relationship with or you have a very good friend and you start talking about something semi-serious or, or serious or important. And you've had a bad day and you're stressed out and you're mental health bad and you've had a lot of social socialising during, during the day and had a lot of sensory aspects, maybe done a bit of travelling. All of those things can kind of put your brain in overdrive and it only requires a certain level of social expectation for you to get into those states. It feels like no matter how hard you try, you you just can't use the speech parts of your brain. It feels like there's there's so much going on in the other parts of your brain, the, all the analysing and all the different niggly things that you don't particularly pay much attention to your speech. And it can feel like it's very it's very much a large effort to try and get words out. You it can take you a long time to process what people are telling you and think about you know, even think about what the implications for you are. Although you may be able to do it with a lot of effort, it's usually very fragmented. The speech is usually fr very fragmented and not really much use comes of it. It can be very frustrating for the person who is having a shutdown if they didn't want to, and it can be very frustrating for other people as well if they don't really understand what's going on. Shutdowns for anybody on the other side, so people who aren't having it and they're looking in on, looking in on you just um, zoning out away in your own little world, they can, you know, there's, there's a few things that you can look for, but the main thing is they're quiet. They may even exhibit a lot more intense of a, an eye contact or they may gaze off into space quite a lot. They may make attempts to talk, but these attempts to talk will be very short, um, very short lived. They won't really have that high level of social skills that they usually do. I'm not saying that they have, they're high for everybody, but it, it does require a lot of energy and a lot of thought to be able to communicate for an autistic person. So in those states, it's even more difficult. As I said, you can try your very hardest to talk, but, but it will never be satisfying for both people. There may be a lot of signs of distress in some people, typically more to do with having a meltdown. There would be a very, very intense lack of facial expression, body language, tone of voice. They'll become very monotone. They may start to get a bit stressed out about it because it's not always pleasant when you can't think like you can't produce speech and you can't understand speech to the level that you could usually do so there's always a bit of frustration sort of worming in there but it's in general a lack of ability to speak and process and um, if you can see that in someone you can see the sort of glazed over eye look then it's, it's likely that they may be having a shutdown so we've gone over a few of the little basics around shutdowns now we're going to talk about the reasons, the, the, the reasons why people have shut down. I know I've covered over a little bit of the, the possible reasons and sort of gelled it all together. I want to dissect, if you will, some of the main points that I've, you know, wrote down and the main points that I've seen in my life. Number one, for me, for me, Mr. Mr. Thomas Henley from the Asperger's Growth Channel, I'm just kidding. Number one thing for causing shutdowns is excessive social interaction. As I've said, social interaction requires a lot of brain energy, a lot of old ATP to get those neurons firing, and there's a lot of them that need to be connected together in order to make you function well in a social environment. So that's a big stressor already on the brain, already depleting the brain of energy and, and wearing out its social centers. If uh, that's the most pseudoscience thing you've ever heard in your life, yes, probably. It's just a vehicle of explanation. Thank you. Number two, anxiety and overwhelmed senses. Yes, you may see a little bit of a, a pattern in these sort of autism related videos, but the truth is, is that anxiety and sensory overload 
is a large part of being autistic, and it is a large part of the problems caused by being autistic. Having an anxious mind already puts you in a state where you're hyperanalyzing and overthinking, same way that if, if you were in a, in a room where there was lots of flashing lights and lots of noises and lots of people and all of those kind of things, all those sensory stimulations coming into your brain, it's equally going to give you a lot of stress and it's going to have to make your brain work over time in order to function properly. Number four. Is that four? Yes, it is. Mental health. Of course. Depression. Depression, for me, seems to be one of the biggest causes of shutdowns. Of course, good old anxiety is definitely a, a causing factor in that. But depression, for me, seems to come along with dissociation. Dissociation being you feel very disconnected from life, from yourself, from what's going on around you. Even, even so, to the extent that, you know, if you're going for a very p bad spot of depression and you're, you're feeling extraordinarily bad, extraordinar extraordinarily bad, I'm going to run with that. You will try to escape from your brain to cope with it. And sometimes it can get, you can get so dissociated that you, you don't feel like anything's real. And you could be having a conversation with somebody and you could be so disconnected from that conversation that you don't realize that you've, you have to reply. It's, it's very difficult to explain. But obviously that can contribute to having a shutdown you're already quite dissociated and you've got all that other stuff going on. Damn! How is your brain supposed to cope? Well, it's going to go into a comatose state and it's not going to be able to do anything. Not comatose, of course, it's a bit overreactive, but you get my gist. The next one is confrontation with an unexpected emotion or, or an unexpected level of emotion. If you are thinking that you're going to, you know, go out with a group of mates and you're going to go to a coffee shop or, or something or you're supposed to go to a, like a bar and have a couple of drinks and then you realise that everybody else in the group wants to go on some wild, spicy night out, then you might feel very overwhelmed by the amount of energy, the amount of emotion that's going ar going on around you. Maybe you've had a hard day at work and you've you've been stressed all day and you, the last thing that you want to be confronted with is a lot of people getting excited. <laughs> it doesn't have to be just these high levels of exciting sort of overstimulating emotions. It could be some form of social expectation. So if you are very involved with somebody or you know someone very well and they're, they're telling something telling you something about them that's important and requires a lot of attention and you haven't thought about it prior to this, then it can be very difficult to structure and formulate speech and opinions and display your emotions on a certain topic when you're in that state of stress and of overwork, being overworked. It's going to be very difficult not to, not for your brain to just shut off and try and escape from the situation rather than try to keep going and overstimulate itself and have a meltdown. So shutdowns, yeah, if, you, if you're not expecting a certain conversation or a certain seriousness, can be a bit overwhelming. One of the other things that probably won't leap to your mind as soon as I t start talking about brains frying up and getting stressed and overworked, but routines, damn. If you have a lot of unexpected transitions during the day, a lot of things that you didn't expect, that can shake your brain under the surface. And whether you know it or not, depending on how severe, how severe the transition is and how much you stress about it, that can have a large impact on your brain because you've already got a set plan out for a day. You think you know what you're doing, that scratched, you gotta make a new one up. And then if that's scratched, like what are you supposed to do? 
there is there is um a lot of difficulty navigating transitions just in any situation for autistic people whether it's navigating from the cat the sofa to upstairs to brush your teeth and then back again that can surprisingly for you know if you've just heard about it causes a lot of stress and um destabilizes you know for a good 10 15 20 30 minutes and as i've said taking on in all these other factors if all of those are true for your day an added transition change can cause your body to freeze up your brain to stop working and sometimes you can have a shutdown because of that now it's all doom and gloom in the asperger's growth channel today on the asperger's growth video in the asperger's growth house <laughs> but what can we do about it what can we do in the moment well, just as the advice goes for pan panic attacks, just as the advice goes for meltdowns, the one thing, the one main thing that you always got to have in your mind is try and see it through. Try and accept that you're going to feel like this for a certain amount of time and do some things that don't require a lot of mental effort but are somewhat enjoyable and somewhat grasp your constant concentration for example if i'm having a shutdown the best thing that i can do is take myself of any type of social environment shut myself somewhere small like a toilet uh, <laughs> play some mindless games that require no mental thought at all maybe other than just like clicking and just listen to some calming music and try and ride it out until i feel like i can verbalize a bit better in terms of things that you can do after, once it's your brain has, has re retrieved some energy and has got out of those little thought loops that keep going around in your brain, then you can start putting in place things to help in the future. Number one thing you can do is try and think of all the factors that led you to having a shutdown. Have they, have they been controlled? Is there, is there any way that you can control those those factors that happen around you to a better ability maybe you can't maybe it's just one of those off days that you can't control but there is always an element of i could keep this in check more um i could you know invest in some noise cancelling headphones to help with the walk from home i could have a little bit of downtime after work instead of trying to cram in some some routine that, I'm, that I've got set up in my brain. There's a lot of things that you can you can do and it's always individual to the person. So if you see something in yourself that happens a lot before you have a shutdown, you need to write that down and you need to think of ways that you can navigate around it or at least make it a little bit easier. One of one of the important things to think about as well is if if you have a shutdown amongst other people so if you have a shutdown in front of your good friend or you have a shutdown in front of your partner, it's always extremely, extremely important to let them know what is happening, what a shutdown is, the specifics of it, the way that it affects your brain, what it feels like, the ways that they can help, the ways that they can notice that you're going through it and tell them. Because even if they are very open to listening and they, they do understand your autism to a certain degree no one can ever give another person the an, a full appreciation to what a shutdown is like so you have to explain it to them in your own personal way and cover it and let them know because it is important and for some people autistic people having shutdowns in response to something that they've said can feel bad for them and it can make them feel like it's a very personal thing which it isn't of course hopefully you guys have got something from this video i put some time and work into it as usual but you don't need to hear that youtubers don't have lives they're just on camera the videos spoof out of nowhere they just shimmy on in there onto youtube with, with no editing with no prior script writing and no effort on camera. <coughs> I don't know where I'm going with this. Honestly, I don't know. I just want to take a minute to appreciate this lovely mug 
that I have been sent very recently uh, by one of my subscribers called David. So if you're watching this, David, shout out to you. Thank you for this lovely mug. I have told you that I struggle very much to drink water, so I've got some water in here to uh, drink throughout my video. So thank you very much, David. I'm gonna have a nice little sip of that. Mmm, H2O. It is also extremely important that I give one of my new Patreons, part of the Elite Subscriber Squad, Cheryl. Thank you very much, Cheryl, for supporting me on my YouTubing media journey. You know, any sort of support for the channel is, is really, you know, I feel very grateful for it and it's never expected, but it's always nice just to have a little bit of income that goes into the channel and it will always be used for the channel and it will always be put back into it for equipment and stuff so if we get more patreon subscribers and we get more more money rolling in maybe we'll be able to be able to get some new equipment and do some more big projects and cheryl thank you so much for being a part of that and pushing my channel forwards if you haven't already checked out my social medias of course, they're down there. Go check them out. You can also find them on the little banner on my profile, YouTube profile. And if you haven't already checked out the 4040 podcast, we're getting we're getting through some episodes on this, guys. It's it's looking good. We've got a new set of people from Instagram. Got a lot of Instagram influencers coming onto the podcast talking about autism, talking about mental health. Come come join in on the podcast. It's free on Spotify and I've not put any advertisements on it yet, so make the most of it while they're not there. This has been Mr. Thomas Hernley from, from the Asperger's Growth YouTube channel. This is a shutdown example. This is what happens. God damn it, I've actually, I've actually done it to myself. I was going to do it as a spoof, but it's it's actually happened. See you later, guys. Nice to have you on this channel. Bye bye. Yeet. Ooh.